In this tutorial, I'm going to show you my workflow and how I go about splitting uh, my models and keying them uh, before 3D printing. When I start keying, I like my parts to have this kind of edge to them before I add the key because I usually don't like the look of a gap and light leak through the, you know, the edge. You, you'll see it like on, on a lot of bad figures. You'll see like there is a, there is a gap, even if it's like really tiny, you can see the light of it. But if you have this nice lip, you, you, you won't, you won't get that. And I'll show you, I'll show you in a bit how, how I do that. So for example, that's a clean part. If you look at the, the pants, I've merged those in, but I'm not, I haven't, you know, cleaned it up to, to make it ready for, uh, you know, for keying. So what I'll do next, see, I don't have to worry about any other stuff that's not visible. So what I'll do, I'll have the jacket cut from the pants. When you're doing keying, make sure you name them because it's end up like being super messy, right? So it's, it's really, really good to, to know which, which part you're working with and which part. So I'm going to hit shift and on the eye and it's going to hide everything. And it's just going to uh, show these two, right? So what I want, I want the jacket to cut from the, uh, from the pants. Here's, you see a couple of icons. These are for something called Boolean. So I'm going to use this, which means the pant is going to cut. If you set it to this, which is the default, it's just going to merge. So if you merge these two, it's just going to make them one piece. But if you have this on and you merge these two subtools, uh, you, this one is going to cut from that one, right? So in ZBrush, there is something really cool that's called Live Boolean. So if I hit Live Boolean here, you're going to see it's going to give you a preview on how this will look once it's cut off, right? I love Live Boolean because there is like not a lot of guessing work. So what you do is you can see what's the effect of the jacket. So I can, and now if you can see, I'm still selected on the jacket. So if I start moving stuff around, like if it, if I would leave it as it was, you'll have this part, you know, floating, but because I have live Boolean on, I can uh, preview it so I can just move the jacket. So I'm moving the jacket if it, even if it's not visible. All right. I'll just go around and see if I if I, if I can fix anything else. So once I'm happy with with the shape, so let's see we have a we have an edge here. Just move the jacket down. So now it's cutting from it, and you have like way more cleaner. So once you're happy with the shape, you just go down to boolean and you do make boolean mesh. So what it's gonna do is gonna do a union meshing. So it's gonna it knows that these two needs to need to be merged, but that one is going to cut from the pants, right? So this way, it's going to go ahead and create like a new uh, mesh for us, and it's going to appear on a different uh, tool. So it's not going to be uh, on the on the sub tools. Usually, it's named U Mesh something. All right. So now I'm going to go down and I'm going to do append U Mesh pants. So if you look at the pants, here you have it. If you look at polygroups, and when I work with this, I don't need the lines because I don't need to see all the mess. So I'll just hide lines, but I want to see the, the fill. So next step is creating the edge. So something similar to that, right? So similar to this. It does take some time, but for me, it's really crucial. So because I really want my, my prints to come out like really clean and I want the, you know, the shapes to not give me any headache when I have to uh, you know, sand and clean. What I did here is I just made these groups. So I was talking, forgot to explain. Uh, so because we have two groups, what I'll do, uh, shift control, uh, that's going to isolate it. And then shift control and just drag. It's just going to flip the selection and I'm going to do shift control on that one. Right. So that then I'll do shift control drag and I'll do control W. All right, for all these, and that's going to make it one group. Now, uh, I can go back. And if you do go select, you know, W and you just click, it will just mask everything. You just keep only keep the, uh, the groups that you selected are visible. So what I want to do now is I want to have 
I want to, uh, by pressing Alt, while pressing Alt, click on the rotation on, and on the center. So these two, this one that looks like a Google Maps bin and this arrow, okay? So what that does, it just centers this shape, not the pants, only that part. So next, is, I'm going to scale it in and I'm just going to move it up. All right. Now that might be, if it's a bit soft, you can do control alt and click. Or you can go to masking and you do sharpen mask. Okay. I think I'm going to, yeah, for some reason it softened the mask. Okay. So that one and this one. So now I'm just going to move these in, scale them and just move them up. All right. So without removing the mask, just go in and take H polish. So go B, H polish, H polish. And now on the edge, you go in and you start doing this cleanup manually. So you either do it with H polish and shift. So you do shift, a bit of H polish, shift, a bit of H polish. You go around until you have, I don't need these extra edges. I just need a, a clean, you know, cylindrical shape. Just so something I can work with and get rid of that ugly edge. When you glue two parts together. And it's also good when you, when you want to cast these and you want to mold them. Uh, it's just going to save you that much headache on having, you know, silicon going through those creases. Usually I'll spend even more time, but you, you get what you get the idea. All right. So once I have that ready, I can go in and, and, and add a key. So now I have the pants. So before I add the key, I'll just go in and I'll take the jacket and move the jacket down now. Now I'll move, I'll use the uh, pants to cut from the jacket. Okay. So as we did before, but now it's just reversed. I have the jacket on top and I'm using the, the pants to cut from it. So once you're happy with the shape, you do the same thing. You select the jacket and you do uh, make bullion mesh. And it's going to do the same thing that it did before. Once you have that ready, we'll just go in and, you know, add, uh, add the keys. And I'm going to show you that next. All right. So let's key the arm to the jacket again, name it, your arm, uh, you mesh jacket. It's nice because if you, you know, when, when, it, once ZBrush adds you mesh, you know, that it has been through a Boolean, uh, you know, process. So it, it, it either was added to it or it was cut from it. So you see. This is how clean I want my shapes before I can start doing any keying. And you'll see it. So I use that once I have the clean, I use that to cut from it. So now let's just add the key. For the key, what I use, I use my own key. Uh, it's called 3D print keys. And what do you do is you select the, the part that you want to key, right? Make sure you have the the brush selected, I'll send you the brush and you just drag. Okay. And you'll see it's floating. So just make sure you don't uh, release the mask or do anything before you, you have this set into place. And then you start moving it in into place. You know, you can scale it, you can resize it, you can rotate it. Okay. Once you're happy with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. Well, this, you got to make sure, see how it, uh, protruded from the jacket. So just move that a bit up. Let's go around making sure that's not happening. And then just do auto groups. And you'll see that in a minute. And shift control on the big cube. So the outer one, right? So now that we have this selected, go split hidden. What it's going to do, it's going to split 
the arm and the smaller key. So my keys work like this. There is a smaller key inside of it. So I'll explain here. So if I drag a new key here and I start and I'll just rotate it. I'll do split unmasked. Here's my key is made of a small key and a bigger key. So we use that to cut from the object and we use that just to merge to the object that's going to be keyed. What I love about this technique is if I go ahead and resize, the scale stays the same, like almost the same. You see there is a, a bit of a a bit of a you know change in the in the shape. So if you but if you even if you go like really crazy with the sizing, it's you still have a nice gap, right? So if you can you can tweak it, you can resize it, you can make it longer if you want like longer keys, if you want like tiny keys, and you, the the gap will always stay the same, and it's always going to be sharp. Uh, you'll see a lot of techniques out there, and usually they'll use Dynamesh and stuff like that. I don't do that. I'll use I'll use uh, keys and I'll use Boolean for them because it's it's just it just keeps the you know the model that much uh, cleaner, that much sharper. So now what do we have? We have an arm with the smaller key, which now I can unmask. They're still not merged, these two. And I have a bigger key, which I'm going to use to cut from the jacket, right? So make sure you don't move this. So if you start moving this around, it's going to screw with the other one, with this one, right? So when you're placing the key, make sure you do that before auto grouping and splitting them. So now I'll do exactly as we did before. I'll do, make sure you have the Boolean which subtracts, not adds. And then this will, you know, show you how the key is going to look on the jacket and make sure it's, it's looking good and, and clean, right? So then once you're happy with that, go make Boolean mesh. It's going to do the same thing. What I love about this technique so you'll see append. You always make sure when you append a new mesh, a new subtool, just make sure you always use the last one. And when you add the last one, just, you know, name it. So jacket keyed. Because then you have another jacket on top and it's just going to, you know, make, make things like way messy. So now we can delete the old jacket. We can delete the key. And now we have a clean model. Now, if you look at it, you're going to notice that this is this has a lot of detail. This is dynameshed and it's about four five point six million. And this has like, I don't know, a couple of faces. Now you can't decimate this. If you go in and you start decimating, if you decimate this, what it's gonna do is gonna break that because it's gonna it's gonna uh, usually it does the percentage for all the, the figure. What you do now is and usually you keep this to the last. So once you finish keying and adding keys to the shirt, to the you know, neck or any other parts. You go in and you go Dynamesh and you select uh, whatever Dynamesh you're going to be using. So let's see if 300 is enough. And you see it still stays pretty sharp. Uh, why did I say you need to leave this process to the end? So the, the part that turns uh, these into uh, this density. Because with every time you do a Dynamesh, you kind of lose a bit of detail. It's not visible, but if you do three or four times a Dynamesh, you will lose a bit of detail. And you notice because Dynamesh has something called a blur, right? And each time you do that, it's going to just add a bit of a blur to your... So let's say you have a lot of details. And you noticed when I added the resolution, I made sure I have no blur because I told ZBrush, look, you don't blur any shape for me. Although, if once you tell it, zero it's still gonna blur a bit of your uh parts there is there are workarounds so you can have project on but it's still like for me i would i always keep the final step of dynamesh and everything to, to the last and this way i'm sure it didn't i did it like once or twice and not uh, overdid it to any any model now if you don't have a custom you know ui you can find this under geometry and if you go to dynamesh this is this is your controls, okay? If you have any questions, let me know. Cheers.